subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell icon to get the latest updates. Researchers in the recovery trial, which is UK's largest well-designed drug trials for COVID-19, have decided to drop the HIV drug combination of lopinavir ritonavir arm from their trials. The reason they cite for this is that with the existing data that they have so far, they've been able to conclude that this drug combination is ineffective in both reducing mortality among COVID patients, as well as preventing escalation of the disease among those who do not yet require ventilators. Back in March, the drug combination was approved by ICMR as well for use in patients above the age of 60, even though other studies at the time, including a prominent one in China, pointed out both the large number of side effects as well as the inefficacy of the drug combination in treating COVID. In this video, we'll talk about the drugs lopinavir and ritonavir, why they're used in combination for treating HIV, and how we thought they could help us in treating COVID. My name is Sandhya Ramesh and this is Pure Science. The lopinavir-ritonavir drug combination was adopted in India after two Italian tourists were treated with this combination of HIV treatment and both of them went on to subsequently test negative. Later on, what happened was that one of them went on to die of cardiac arrest. The discontinuation of this drug combination in the recovery trial comes after the discontinuation of yet another one of India's favorite drugs with no proven effects of fighting COVID, hydroxychloroquine. And this is the same trial that showed benefit for dexamethasone as well, which we saw in detail in an earlier video. The steering committee of the recovery trial concluded after the lopinavir ritonavir test that they have conducted that data convincingly rules out any meaningful mortality benefit of the drugs in hospitalized COVID-19 patients. The trial studied nearly 1,600 randomized patients for 28 days and the outcomes were compared with about 3,400 patients receiving standard care, which was a control in the study. Patients had varying levels of severity of the disease with a small number requiring ventilators, a large number of patients requiring just oxygen and not ventilators, and some needing no respiratory assistance at all. The researchers found at the end of 28 days for the patients that there was no difference in whether people would need ventilators or whether more serious patients would survive irrespective of whether they just received standard care or whether they received the drug combination. Just as India was adopting this drug combination's use, China also reported no benefits from randomized trials on the drug combination for COVID. India no longer uses the drugs to treat COVID patients. Both lopinavir and ritonavir are antiretroviral drugs, which means they work against retroviruses. Retroviruses are RNA viruses that insert a copy of their genome into the DNA of the host cell they invade. And in this process, they end up essentially modifying the genetic code of the host organism. HIV is a retrovirus and it has two types. HIV-1 is the most commonly found around the world and HIV-2 is found mainly in Africa. The drug combination of lopinavir-ritonavir is a fixed dose combination where two or more drugs are given in a specific ratio together for a more robust result. The combination was patented in 1995 and it was used medically for the first time in hospitals by the year 2000 along with other drugs. These two drugs are protease inhibitors which means that they prevent the HIV virus from replicating inside our bodies and increasing the viral population or the viral load and thus the drugs work by decreasing the amount of virus in our bloodstream, the HIV virus. And this is the same way that we thought it would also act against the SARS-CoV-2 virus with treatments hoping that the drug combination will reduce the viral load in our bodies. Ritonavir acts as a booster for lopinavir, increasing its quantity in the body and amplifying the drug's effect. 
The drug combination cannot cure HIV. We don't have any drugs today that can cure or kill viruses, but the combination can treat HIV and prevent an HIV positive patient from developing AIDS. The combination is typically given as a tablet or a solution, often mixed in with alcohol and is always to be taken orally once or twice a day, depending on what the patient requires. And as with every drug we discuss, the combination comes with a long list of serious side effects. These include a lot of gastrointestinal troubles like diarrhea, nausea, vomiting, heartburn, gas, stomach pain, loss of appetite and other kinds of stomach upset issues. They also induce headaches, dizziness, fainting, drowsiness and insomnia or weight gain or weight loss. The combination can also cause life-threatening effects in newborn babies and can also induce a serious condition called ketoacidosis in adults. It can even cause skin rashes, yellowing of the skin or eyes like the jaundice and irregular heartbeat. The drug combination was approved for use in treatment against COVID-19 in other countries as well, such as Russia. And the drug is also referred to under the brand name Caletra. Meanwhile, the recovery trial still continues and has enrolled over 11,000 patients. There are a number of other drugs that are being tested as a part of recovery trial, despite two drugs being dropped. These include azithromycin, tocilizumab, dexamethasone, as well as convalescent plasma therapy, which is blood plasma collected from patients who've already recovered and transfused into active patients. After dexamethasone conclusively showed positive results, according to this trial, recruitment for dexamethasone has now been stopped, but the trial is still actively recruiting for tocilizumab, azithromycin, as well as convalescent plasma therapy. The trials are conducted by University of Oxford in England. And that brings us to the end of this episode of Pure Science. Thank you for watching.